Good afternoon, viewers. And um, once again, it's the Enterprise Uganda Business Forum, and we are discussing practical business solutions that can help you, you know, make it in business. Last week, we had a very, um, I should say, riveting story from one of the entrepreneurs from Guru, uh, Thomas Oloya. I think, Charles, that was quite uh, something. Now, um, today, um, we want to tackle a very important aspect in business, and uh, that is capital. Um, many a time we tend to look at capital as just money, but there is something called intellectual capital. And if you look at some of the big businesses globally, uh, this virtue, this value actually comes out quite strongly in uh, one, answering some of society's critical problems, but then also as a basis for building strong businesses. So today uh, our topic is going to be on uh, practical business tips on how you can convert your professional qualification and that now speaks to the intellectual capital we're talking about into a vibrant business enterprise and this afternoon in the studio as usual i have uh, uh an important uh, distinguished gentleman i would like him to introduce himself uh good evening viewers i'm charles ochichi i'm the executive director of enterprise uganda very good I'm and then in the same um um, Spirit, we have uh, uh, an important guest, um, Grace, I'll beg you to introduce yourself to the viewers. Um, I'm Dr. Naikas Grace, a pharmacist registered with the Pharmaceutical Society of Uganda. Very good. Now, before we come to Grace's story, because Grace has a very powerful story and I would like you to really settle and you're going to learn a lot from her experience as, a, first of all, a professional but then also as a business person. Many a time we tend to think that the two don't, you know, rhyme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are many instances and cases, like I mentioned in the preamble, where we see this flying and flying high. Charles, um, mm -hmm. let's go to, today is our fifth session, since we began, mm -hmm. you know, these sessions really sharing with people. Mm -hmm. First, we began looking at uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, how businesses can weather the storm. Mm -hmm. Now we are scaling it up. And... Uh, I remember one of the viewers last week was telling us that, you know, from what I'm picking, this is beyond just how to weather the COVID-19 uh, pandemic storm, but then also mm -hmm. how to survive in business or to build lasting businesses. Mm -hmm. So in the same um, uh, kind of spirit, um, give us what you've so far picked from the public, from what we've shared. Mm. Uh, thank you so much, Charles. And I want to tell the viewers that... Um, these sessions on Sunday afternoon are not just meant to be a story about COVID-19. Mm. It's about a story of starting an enterprise at whatever stage you are and making that enterprise create for you as much benefits as possible, mm. but most importantly, transform the community. Mm -hmm. From the 19 years of Enterprise Uganda's uh, building entrepreneurs, we are now able to showcase some of the stories that I feel teach people many things. We have since seen that there is specific challenge in crossing an enterprise from the founder to the next generation, yeah. now that family succession. Mm -hmm. And viewers know that many businesses have, have not crossed that line. Mm -hmm. We have also since seen that uh, you can get a lot of money in your core business, but how to continue that growth journey and then diversify as you wish, is not as easy as people imagine. We have also seen, seen that um, young people can go into business and succeed, starting with nothing. Yeah. And as I will later be going to the lessons from a lawyer, you can see that wherever you are located, opportunity to succeed is big. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to tell the viewers that save Sunday afternoon for a very important opportunity to learn mm -hmm things you don't get from a textbook. Yeah. And we will endeavor to make sure that from the more than 120,000 clients of Enterprise Uganda, we'll keep bringing them here. Each story is different. Each story has got something you learn from. And that is what we want this country to appreciate and know. And also we're beginning to see that indeed Ugandans are interested in this subject. Yeah. The amount of phone calls, the amount of inquiries, the amount of people saying, when is the next training? When do we get the next sessions? 
it's just amazing. I hear you. And that's a very fulfilling thing when you are heading an institution like Enterprise Uganda. Tell us mm. something, Charles. Um, mm. uh, from your experience, mm. you, you talked about over 20 years of Enterprise Uganda skilling and training people. Mm. Um, how relevant is or are these trainings you know, to the business person or operator? Because many times we tend to hear words like business acumen. There are those who think that actually businessmen are born. Mm. Uh, they are not mad and mm. that kind of thing. Uh, mm. Just break down for us the importance of training and hand-holding in business. Let me put it to the viewers that there are about five stages of enterprise growth. Mm. We are from zero to becoming a micro-entrepreneur. There is a mindset you must wear at that point. And there are things that you've been made to believe that you cannot start. So at that stage, there are business development services you must acquire to have the courage to move from a zero entrepreneur to now somebody who is running an enterprise. Mm -hmm. As they will be later seeing the story of a lawyer illustrate some of those things I will be sharing. Mm -hmm. But the moment you become a micro-entrepreneur, a micro-entrepreneur is not what you are born to be. Yeah. You should move from there from micro to small, but also don't remain small. Again, at the stage of small, you begin to have a bit of more income than, than somebody who has nothing at all. And if we do not assist you, to formalize at that stage and begin to do things that sustain you. Mm -hmm. That stage is where you are either stagnating or you completely collapse again from there. Now, from small to medium, mm -hmm. the game begins to become tighter. To cross that line and really become a medium-sized enterprise, you had a sort of yoga chick, yeah. you had a sort of uh, Nina Interior. Those are people who are having issues way beyond the ordinary challenges of a micro-entrepreneur. You see them as if they are succeeding. We have what we call the missing middle mm. in enterprise development. In other words, people will start on large numbers from micro, I mean from nothing to micro. Then from micro to small, a few more will cross that line. To move from small to medium size, very few businesses get in there. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call the vacuum point. You enter there, it's a danger zone. You, you do so well. You enter that point, it's a danger zone. Mm. And many times, it's how to handle success. Mm. Because now bankers know you. Because actually, I was going to ask, why yeah. is it hard to actually make that leap? That is the point when everybody loves you and is talking about you. And it's now that success, that makes you forget the two fundamentals of private sector. Mm. And those two are, a customer is buying a functional solution. If we have been thinking about your success, and you forget that I'm coming to buy something functional, and you keep on telling me about your history, I will leave you and go to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yet at that stage, so many people are watching you and copying you, and they want to do as well as you are doing, and they are trying to remove your own employees, mm -hmm. and they will cause you a lot of challenges. So that aspect of forgetting that fundamental entry point for private sector, we do not buy history. Yeah. We do not buy your big name in the country. We continue buying what we feel is working for me today as I buy. Number two, you also forget at that stage that the competition has been awakened. Mm. Many people have been inspired by your story, and now many want to get in there. And as they try to get in there, they find you sleepy. They even do it better. They do it better. Mm. You're complacent. So these two things are easy to forget when prominence comes in. I hear you. So we tell people that Africans have failed to cross the line of small to medium and medium to become a global brand because of forgetting these two fundamentals of what it takes to enter the private sector. Very good. Mm. Let's go to the key learnings from a lawyer before I bring in Grace here. The story of a lawyer has interesting aspects that any Ugandan, no matter your age, would love to know. And indeed, we received calls from all categories of Ugandans, mm. retiring people, young people, educated, non-educated, professionals in fish farming and non-professionals. Everybody was just delighted about the lawyer story. A lawyer was a young man who, out of very bad circumstances, lost his both parents. And in the course of that deprivation, he couldn't go beyond senior six. And the senior six we are talking about here is a rudimentary senior six in a low quality school. That's the lawyer we are talking about. But what did the story bring out? Number one,
startup capital, in other words, resources to start a business are not a limiting factor. Never, no matter who you are. Even for a lawyer with no parents, even for a lawyer with nobody to give him resources, startup capital or resources to do business is not a limiting factor. Mm. For a lawyer, the land, the stream water, clay, potato leaves, malwa waste were always there. But what was missing? A mindset of a lawyer saying, how do I convert these raw materials into a solution called a fish pond? Mm. Number two lesson. Mindset is understood, but not clearly appreciated. Mindset is created when you begin to take new actions in a new direction consistently. When a lawyer, a lawyer left training, for three weeks he disappeared from his friends. We were giving him a wrong mindset. He went to dig the pond, 10 by 15 meters alone for three weeks. At that point you begin to know that this mindset thing is beginning to manifest. Mm -hmm. Number three, we also saw that always begin a business within your means. Mm. Many people will want a, a, a fish pond of some 50 by 50 meters. Mm. Or lawyer went and started one he could dig. You bite what you can chew. Exactly. Mm. No need to say, now where do I get a tractor to dig this place? Now where do I get people to help me? He said, I will use my resources. And what were the resources he had? He said, Naje. Mm. And he started with a 10 by 15 meters. Now, today he has one of the ponds alone is 95 meters by 65 meters. The total stock of the fish is between 120,000 and 150,000 fish in the pond. Mm. But the beginning within its means. Mm. So uh, the, we tend to delay and postpone starting because you want to start in a cert certain yeah. grand manner, you know. The other lesson that also we got to appreciate from a lawyer's story is that um, do not expect things to be smooth. The takeoff for a lawyer was so rugged. After digging the pond for three weeks, he did that, the water came, he had no capital to buy <laughs> fingerlings. <laughs> now the water is in, he can't have fish in the water. Then again he said, Enterprise Uganda said, never give up. What else can you do? Mm -hmm. He quickly saw the amount of clay around a dug up place and said, what if I converted this clay into bricks? Mm -hmm. He did exactly that. Mm -hmm. And he got working capital For to put fish running. in the water. So ruggedness is the story here. Yeah. If you had to read a business plan of a lawyer, most likely would just say, I've dug up this thing, now I'm looking for capital to get the fingerlings. Reading neat and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very neat. You can't get that one put in a business plan. The other aspect of a lawyer's story is that no matter where you come from, no matter your level of education, you must acquire key success factors for the industry or a sector you are going in. Mm. A lawyer had never been to any fisheries class, but he mastered on how to get this to happen by visiting another fishery, uh, a, fish, a fish pond owner. Mm. And when you listen to him speak when he was here, you could see how the man would talk about digging the pond, mm. selecting fingerlings, feeding the fish, marketing the fish. He spoke the language as if he was a lecturer mm. of the subject. Because he's living it. He's living it. Mm. So key success factors can be acquired and you just need to be interested in getting those to, to be acquired. The other thing we learned was that a lawyer was personally involved and daily monitoring all his businesses. He was in the fish ponds, waking up at 4 a.m. He would go and check on the trees. He would go and check on the chicken. He would go and check on the 100 acres with soya. Mm. Every day, waking up at 4 a.m. Before that, he was an ordinary person doing mueso and playing at the roadside. Mm. The other thing we learned from a lawyer's story is that seek to transform the, the community so that you begin to belong to them, mm. and they begin to support you. So lawyer has used his fish ponds for schools to visit and learn about uh, fish farming. Mm. He has given jobs to his own people. Then the other point that came out was that success that stands out is visible from afar 
and it will always be recognized and it will be supported. I remember his story. Oh lawyer, he the story of going to Geneva. Of going to Geneva, <laughs> yes. And the day he spent in Entebbe. <laughs> Correct. Mm. He had never boarded a plane. Mm. He had never gone to a European world. The fellow was when we shared the story. Yeah. Uncle had simply said, "Please give us a lawyer urgently." And they were on phone coordinating his visa, saying, mm. "We want a lawyer." When he arrived late in Geneva, they were right at the airport saying, "We need this man at the conference." And when he reached there, it was their outstanding story. Mm. How do you ignore a story of a young man who started with virtually nothing and was now speaking in terms of Uganda money, almost a, a billion shillings every eight months? Yeah. You can't ignore that anywhere in the world. That's quite powerful. So success, if you can shine among us your peers, among us your colleagues, and really come out standing, you will be rewarded and recognized. I hear you. Humility was the other thing that we saw. This fellow was still using public transport to come all the way from Gulu to Kampala and back. But the resources he's acquiring, must, and he's not ashamed mm. to even mention that. Competition. The young man now knew that the story of his success is not a story among his youth. It's a story of competing for space for anybody involved in fish farming. Many of them are well resourced, some of them well connected, but he said, just keep on improving whatever you are doing every day because even the competition is being run by normal human beings, compete with them. Mm. He also mentioned something about giving grants to young people, and he said, grant is best used when channeled to someone already doing something. Idol youth, and I thought this was extremely useful from a young person, he said, Idol youth have a lifestyle have lifestyle habits and he cited drinking, betting. And those habits he said they can destroy any financial support the youth get if their mindsets and if their habits are not fixed. Mm. Finally, when he was asked about getting capital or loans, he said it's okay for young businesses to be given capital. But it should not be for idle hands. Please get somebody already doing something. Give him a loan because he has already mastered on how to get a customer and fulfill a customer need. His headache now is how to improve things. And those resources should be available, cheaper, and easily accessible. But should be for people who are already running. As opposed to just saying, oh, you are idle, why don't we give you money? Mm. I hear you. Those were the key learnings that came out of that. No, no, no. Very mm. powerful, very powerful mm. messages in there. And I'm sure mm. viewers really, those who missed that discussion or missed some of the points, today you've got them quite precisely. Mm. And uh, because the objective of this discussion is actually to help you as a business person, uh, you know, access some of these or understand and grasp some of these key vacuums for doing business. And it's one of the reasons why you can, you're seeing we're taking time to even revisit Mm. what we've learned in the previous sessions. Mm. Like we advised, uh, I think, two weeks ago, it's mm. always good to have, you know, watch this show Very with true. a pen and paper somewhere. Because you can pick a thing or two. Yeah. Grace, I'm sure my viewers want to hear from you. Um, who is Grace and uh, what do you do? Uh, Grace is a young pharmacist who graduated um, four years ago. And now I'm um, owning a pharmacy called Jinko Pharmacy. It's recorded in Kulambiro. Secondly, I have a medical center. As I talk, it's five months old. Okay. Yeah. Mm. That's Nika's grace. Okay. Um, give us an idea. How is um, business? What is uh, your experience so far? Business is the right thing to do. It's the way to go. Mm. Business. When you do business with the right right mind and right information you never regret I hear you. up to today i say it's one of the biggest choices of my life i've made most scientists tend to be comfortable where they are because we have this feeling that scientists are so much sought after and uh, we rarely see them making the leap going into business they tend to be comfortable you know working somewhere else how did you you know uh, get into that business mind and say I'll take this direction. Actually, um, there are some people I have to thank. The, law, the mayor of Nakawa, 
mm. because I saw the advert of Enterprise Uganda, it was in a, a WhatsApp group okay. where the mayor, Ronald Balmuenzo, mm. was advising all, all youths in the Kawa division to go and attend an Enterprise Uganda session, mm. which whereby I think they benched the government contributed something, so we we're just paying like 5,000. And trust me, 5,000 I paid. I always value it because it transformed me to who I am today. Mm. Talking about transformation, mm. paint for us a picture uh, before I come into you know, the, the real values that you think from that training. Mm. How big is your operation? How many people do you employ? You know, I'm sure our viewers would like to really you know, feel uh, Mm. that I think now I have um, 12 employees I have a cleaner I have a cashier I have uh, two nurses myself I'm part of the employee then with the medical center I have four a clinic officer a midwife two nurses a cleaner a cashier how long have you been in business <laughs> just three years okay and would you say that you reached that point where you feel uh, the business has settled? I know, of course, there are aspirations to achieve, but where you feel you're not like riding a wild horse? I think where I am, I'm fair because the farmers have already given birth to a drug shop, a medical center. Actually, I have two clinics okay. and a drug shop. I've paid school fees for my young sister at campus. And I feel proud of it. It's the business that has enabled me to do that. Mm. So I feel, although it's still hard and I'm still aiming higher, I'm at least somewhere. I was going to ask about your age, but then I realized I have to be a gentleman. <laughs> yes, that's um, true. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's go to the values of the training you got from uh, Enterprise Uganda. What values did you pick there that have really helped you, you know, get where you are today? Actually, me, I thought... For someone to start a farmer, you wanted, you needed a lot of money, mm. like 20 millions and above, 25. So according to me, I was like, maybe I'll open a farmer's, maybe after 10 years from now, after accumulating the capital. Mm. Here comes me in a, in a conference, they are telling us, start with what you have. What do I have? I'm already a pharmacist. Start with the little you have. But the little I have was too little. Mm. But it is the knowledge I got that made me to know that what I have is not actually little. Actually, whenever my friends come to ask me how I started, how where did I get the money, I always tell them I had only 2 million. I had 2.5 million with me. But the knowledge I had was too big to compare with me that the capital will find me on that way. Mm. Because uh, when we attended, Mr. Chicho always told us that capital will never announce itself that we are here. But when you start, there is a way capital falls. So you're part visit. of the capital, the, in, the, the, the knowledge and all the that. The knowledge is, but actually the skill I acquired from Enterprise Uganda was capital. I hear you. Yeah. Charles, yes. um, what are the key learnings we're picking from this, very quickly for our viewers? There are many things that uh, you could see that this country can pick up from this short submission from the young lady Grace. And one of those that I can see here is that uh, a local leader, a mayor of Nakawa, mm. takes effort to say, I'm going to advertise this thing, I believe in it. Mm. And getting a respected name like that to associate with this kind of a thing, that otherwise people would say that, what, what is that? It was such a beautiful thing. So I think uh, one of the key learnings here is that the leaders need to appreciate that um, our young people are innocent and trying to get a bearing. And they look up to us. Mm. If you point them in a wrong direction, they go that direction. If you point them in the right direction, they go that, dire that, that direction. But Mueso said, you people go. This training is good. But also because Balmueso himself appreciates business and he actually practices business. Mm -hmm. And when the training was going on, he was all the time popping in there to check and see whoever lives this place, whoever lives this place, I will cane you. So 
that is a very key thing that I saw in here. But also you could see from the young lady's story that um, do not get modest success and begin to celebrate it. Mm. Because having started just the first outlet, she could have just said, this okay now. I'm I've sorted out these things. I'm told it's called area rivalism. You Correct. feel like you've arrived already. Yes. She would have just said, really? With this? And I'm sure in where she was before she came into business, mm. she might have to as well give us a bit of a background what she was doing before getting into business. Mm. Because what she now started was better than what she had been having before. Many business people have settled early after getting modest success. The lady has continued making sure that the resources that are coming in are measured, are handled in a measured way to continue consolidating what she's doing. Consolidating what she's doing. And you can also see the way she's recruiting people. She's recruiting people with the clear designation of duties. Mm -hmm. Not just saying, I have uh, workers, a cashier. Mm -hmm a cleaner, mm. a clinical officer, a midwife. Beginning to appreciate what you call a structured outlook to running an enterprise at her age. I hear you. Mm. Very, very important point. Uh, I like the fact that you diversifying or you, you actually within the same mm. line of trade. Yeah. Because uh, we've seen cases where entrepreneurs diversify are into other sectors where they don't yes. even have a crew. Probably yes. she would be owning uh, a banana plantation somewhere, <laughs> yes. going into eucalyptus planting yes. and that kind of thing. <laughs> but um, Grace, I understand, um, you know, when we hear these stories, someone might think it's a bed of roses. Mm. So I know you had to deal with certain realities to actually make it where you are today. Sure. Uh, share with us um, some of the realities you had to put up with at the beginning to actually build what you have today. Actually, when I was looking for the location, I used to foot. Most of the times I would foot, I, I, like I would get a taxi, it takes maybe to Mukono, but I have to go deep in Mukono to look for the location on foot. Mm, I would move up to Sonde, that side. Like you, when you feel tired, you get a border, mm. you move around. Up when I got that convenient place, actually, as I was looking for a location, I would listen to Mr. Chichi's voice, whereby look for a location that you can afford so that you don't use all the capital on rent. So I found a house which was three, three, three hundred thousand. Mm. Remember, before I was sleeping in a house of, uh, of uh, 350,000 shillings. So this was already the capital <laughs> mm. <laughs> being put to use. So, as I, I got the place, now the place was small, yeah. so I had it paven behind okay. with the, in mind that I would break the wall and make the thing bigger for a pharmacist. Being a pharmacist, at least I knew the recommendable size for farmers. Now the problem comes, the landlord refused for me to break, mm -hmm. but I had paid for three months. He was like, if you really you are serious, you want to break, you have to pay me 900,000 shillings. Remember, I'm already limited in capital. Mm. I tried to beg with the man, he refused, so I had to pay him that money. After paying he, that money, I'm the one who was supposed to break that, the wall, and f furnish it the way it's supposed to be. Mm. I had to call in the village, I had a cousin brother who came and helped me to break. I was involved in a process, I would lift the, those debris and throw them there where we are throwing them, I knock them myself. It was challenging, and people would wonder what is wrong. But at mm. the beginning, it, it wasn't a bed of roses. Because mm. actually, after paying for rent, I had to look for the guy who was going to do the partitioning. The guy who was going to do the partitioning asked, I think, for five million. I didn't have the five million, though I was remaining with one million. That remained on the, uh, on the two. Mm. I gave him that, then I promised him every month I'll be paying him, let him start. Because I was having another pharmacy where I was working. So any money I get from my place of work, I put okay. on my... After partitioning, the five million had gotten finished. The guy says, no, that's very little money. I can't make for it the counters unless you add me three million. Now that was almost impossible. I tried to look around... 
there was a carpenter nearby i went i told him i want something like this he told me i know everything i've understood i would do it he tells me how many how much will you give me how much would you accept i'm the one asking he was like me i can do that at only two millions mm-hmm. kumbe he knew nothing about <laughs> what i wanted <laughs> 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 so every day come sit to supervise you see that he does something which is just <laughs> dancing there is no way medicine could stand in it i call with <laughs> this guy he was like the problem you sit there and see mm. you be aware mm. we we'll call you when the work is mm. done let us concentrate yeah. <laughs> yes allow us to concentrate <laughs> so almost a month ended that the guy is doing nothing mm. so at uh, one time i i had given him uh, 800000 he stopped even coming Oh my god. I went but uh, when we were attending, he said she told that whatever you do, make an agreement. Mm. So we had written, I agree with and so to make me accounter within two weeks. So I had to carry that agreement to police. But our police they would even chase him when I'm seeing they reach somewhere because they would tell me, Come and go and show him to us. Mm. I showed them he's there. <laughs> they try to show as if they are chasing him. <laughs> then they come back with his shoes. They say, we even had removed his shoes. <laughs> he survived now. <laughs> but he said no. <laughs> Yet maybe they were. Well, he was giving them something and he comes. Even he would pass on the road and say, that woman is stupid. She mm. wanted to do anything. Mm. But I had another, I had a friend who was an OC in Nagalama. He ordered some friends of his. They came and caught him. When they caught him, they put him in um, I see, I guess you see a court. Mm. I went there once. I even I felt bad because the guy was in Ruzira. He had spent there a week. I felt pity. But after that, they were like, he's going to give you your... I told them, yeah, I don't need any money. I just need my money. I go and get someone else. They were like, he will give you your money. Uh, next time you, when you come back, I k- I went next time I come back they told me people I thought you talked and settled the matter. <laughs> the guy was released long time ago. Oh I said, God. "Ah, let me give up on that. I concentrate. I got money." Actually, this time I was like, "I'm not employing somebody nearby." So my 800 went like that. Mm, and <laughs> time lost. Time mm. lost. So I employed I I called someone who uh, directed me some guys were from Lila. I employed them. Actually, the job uh, took 2.5 for the counters. Mm. They slept there. They s- did it in two days, and they finished. Now, I finished to put everything. I don't have any money to start. Even the license is still at NDA. So I would go at NDA every day. NDA was like, we are no longer giving licenses for Kampala. So wait for more two months. But remember, my rent is going. Mm. <laughs> mm. Remember, from uh, wait for two months, we'll give you a decision. But there is a guy at NDA, he wa- he's, uh, he's also a pharmacist, he's Dr. Nahamia, he really helped me. He was like, don't mind, they will allow you, keep on, don't give up. <coughs> yeah, I would go there almost every, over, every Tuesday, I would go there and sit. Actually, in the process, some people were like, since they have seen the premises and it is okay, and you, you're a pharmacy, you know the measurements, you start. And I was like, what if I start? And, and they, they come, come and lock mm. up my things. So, but though I could start, I could not start because I had no capital. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so I tried to move around um, wholesale pharmacies, asking them whether it's possible to give someone who is just starting capital. Okay, creditors mm. in drugs. They mm. were like, we can't do that. We can't, uh, you first have to buy from us at least five months. Then we see your cash flow before we give you cut. Hey, I was stuck. I told the friends, relatives, I want money. I've already put the, everything is in order. When you reach there, you would see it's a pharmacy, but no medicine. Actually, even I didn't have money to pay for the license. I was like, if it's possible, they lend me the license. <laughs> <laughs> I work a bit. Takes courage, yeah? <laughs> I work a bit, then I pay the license back. Mm. So, I I had reached a point of failing. 
but there were, I used to tell my friends who are pharmacists, if you have like 2 million or 4 million, please mm. give me. When I start like this, I'll pay. Arambe. <laughs> mm. Mm. But thank God there was a lady, she's also a pharmacist, she's called Bavilia Jane. She told me after seeing, after seeing the place of the farmers, was like, I have some 4 million, I can give you, but you give it to me in April. Hold it there, Grace. Uh, Charles, this is a very mm. important um, experience. And I'm sure a number of our viewers can relate to some of these realities. Because yeah. these are issues that the business community contends with mm. on a daily. Yeah. What are the key learnings there before I bring Grace back to complete her story? What the listeners need to appreciate is this. When it comes to private sector, challenges have got no room for somebody who's a beginner. Whether you're a beginner, mm -hmm. whether you're seasoned, whether you're known in the whole country, challenges will come knocking. Those kind of things she went through are the things you'd have wished the world not to throw on her. It was already hard enough for her to get take off resources. More difficult for her to be monitoring a carpenter. She has never known how to monitor a carpenter. Monitoring people who are seasoned thieves. And the thief simply looks at this girl and says, this young one here, I will take her money, there's nothing she can, she can do to me. Mm. She goes ahead and gets a landlord who initially says, you know what, take up this place. This is all yours. You begin to say, now what if I did this and I continue being your tenant? He gives you conditions. Mm. Those conditions should not have been for a beginner. Mm. But the message is clear. Now we know why it, it takes a lot of effort to build an entrepreneur. The challenges, the hurdles ahead are numerous. If, even if this young lady had money, did you know that just the headaches of dealing with the carpenters, mm -hmm. people trying to complete the setup here were more than enough to make her say, please, if this is the case, I'm putting my applications and continue looking for a job. Mm -hmm. It is tough mm -hmm. to create a resilient, committed, enterprising mind. Grace, so how are you negotiating that corner to actually make this work? Uh, this work, I told, um, no, now we are at a level of, mm. I've gotten four million, four million from yeah. a friend. He mm. pr she promised. Mm. Now one time I was at National Drug Office and I see some Indians talking about wholesale pharmacies, what, what. I s you even okay, go. all this, mm. I keep even getting that courage to go and talk to a stranger it was part of the training of enterprise uganda because there is no way you would just go and start talking to strangers you don't know i saw some indians were talking about wholesale wholesale and from nowhere since i know my problem i came close to them and i was like good, good morning excuse me is it possible to give uh, drugs on credit for someone who is just beginning <laughs> mm. they told me are you the one i was like yes I'm a pharmacist and I'm beginning but I don't have capital. Mm. They say, how much money do you have? I was like, I can have three to four million. <laughs> they were like, okay. Okay, it's the pharmacy's life farmer. That one I'll talk about it because it did me good. Mm -hmm. they, he was like, you come with those, those four millions, we talk. Now I rushed to my friend. We mm. went with her. The money was not there. The money was not there, but she had promised me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we went with her to the bank. She gave me the money. Mm. She was mm. my angel. Mm. So mm. I took the money to the Indian. He was like, checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> I tell her, me, I don't have any checkbook. Actually, I didn't even have an account. I was okay. like, now uh, that's the, the rule. But now, okay, can you bring us your license as a pharmacist? I, I was like, yes, I have the license. So he added on top of my four million, he added six million as credit <coughs> drugs. But wow. he was like, you know what? Don't, uh, don't buy all of them at once. I'm giving you a credit of uh, of uh, six, six million, million mm. but in that money you can buy whatever you as things go on. So mm. they made for me a simple stock, mm. and I would. Add. Stock incrementally. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now, there I, ha I started. I started um, paying every time. Every money I get, 
I take all of it to the mind. He gives me more stock. Every man. That takes discipline. Eh? After six, all that we got it from Enterprise Uganda, for example. Even when you, uh, okay, they trained us. Even when you fail to pay a debt, don't allow the person who has given you the debt to call you first. Mm -hmm. You call first and explain so that they know you are thinking about them. So any little man I would get, I would take. Now time was almost catching up with me with a friend who trusted me to pay in Apple. Because by Apple I could not pay back the money. Mm, mm. <laughs> I called her, I told her, you know I was delayed by NDA, but be patient with me, I'll pay. After like six months, I'd already paid half of the Mindy's money. Now I stop with the Mindy, I start collecting money from my friend. But remember, I had a job whereby I would work and they pay me one million, one point eight for a month. Mm. So this one I would also add in, put some for the, the, the debts I was having. <coughs> yeah, that's how I managed. By six months, I had finished the mind. Now I had to explain to a friend. Quite powerful there. Uh, now tell us, because I can see you're already now juggling, like um, any businessman, a mm. micro, mm. exact starting yeah. operation. Yeah. And... Uh, Behind you, you had a family that had uh, probably sold some of their possessions to put you where you are. Mm. Mm. And I'm just, you know, um, uh, mm. giving that as an example because it happens. Mm. Yeah. But the point I'm trying to make here is that these people have a lot of expectations. In this, probably you're the first scientist in, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. your family, in the clan. And they are always high hopes, mm. you know, and I know parents will always say it with swag when they're mentioning my daughter is a <laughs> pharmacist, is a doctor yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, mm. How were your parents, your family reacting to all this? Actually, the Enterprise Uganda, I, <coughs> lack of knowledge is something deadly. When I would get my monthly salary, I would say maybe this time I'm giving my dad some money. Mm. Maybe this time I'm giving my aunt my mom mm. but now time came all that was cut <laughs> off <laughs> so nice. you are giving gifts every month yeah mm. how do plan <laughs> donate <laughs> mm. actually if i had uh, maybe got the information earlier maybe i would have started earlier yeah. but you know we have that impression that you have to start big yeah yet in the real sense we have to start small mm. and grow big mm. I, hear yeah. you. I hear you so now this <laughs> happens and the beneficiaries, the other side, are no longer seeing their <laughs> gifts coming. Mm. Yeah. So how are you reconcil reconciling that position with, you know, this new reality that you're dealing with? Mm. Mm. I know. And I'll continue to receive their support. Yes. Anyway, Charles, mm, um, yes. <coughs> it's mm. a very important point. I think Grace, as <laughs> Grace recollects, because I think... Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, um, mm. What do we pick from this, especially for our young entrepreneurs, the yeah. micro operators, because they tend to mm. find some of these hurdles and just say, mm. I think I've had enough of this. I think the first thing we need to recognize is that we as relatives, community, leaders, as we push young people into business, let's know that the challenges is not just about the capital only. Yeah. The challenges are numerous, and the issue of capital, even the bit you thought was enough, most likely will not be enough. Yeah. Now, you need this person to have a sense of self-belief that this is my journey. Yeah. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to complete it. You could see it from the story of Grace. Mm. Grace now knew that these needs are expanding. Initially, I thought it was just these shelves. Mm. Now there's this challenge. Then there's another one. Then there's the theft. Then mm. there's there are people that are and dishonest workers. Mm. Now, all this way all over her, and the courage to keep going was key in her. Yeah. But now when you look at when she went for that, that visit at the drug authority, where the Asians who are doing wholesale were talking, sh her ears were listening <laughs> for an opportunity to sell to solve her problems. Yeah. These people are talking about wholesaling and selling and what have you. She says, by the way, I'm a pharmacist. And I would be happy to see whether I can get some um, credit. support, credit from you. Mm. Now, that needed you to appreciate the power of information. Yeah. And having the courage to speak it out. Mm. That is a business mindset. And courage is quite strong. Actually, I, 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 uh, mm -hmm. 
applaud her also on the, uh, the courage she used to, to <laughs> go for that licensed guy and say, can't you give me this thing on credit? Correct, correct. Yes. The other thing that you see again is this, that one, within the societal own community, resources are there. Yeah. The four million of her friend was mm. in the account. Yeah. And the owner said, I have something to do with my money. Mm. But then when she visits her place and sees the kind of commitment the friend is having, she says, let me lend you this money. Mm. Again, telling you that let's not imagine that mm -hmm. as we look at the community, it is a government to Yambe. Mm. There is a lot more amount of resource or resources with the community, mm. but the community is a better force sometimes even of enforcing discipline and better use of resources. Because the day she picked a friend's money, the friend was now visiting and associating with her every day. As opposed to when sometimes it's an easy way of saying, you know, some distant uncle from somewhere has given me this money, yeah. or even better still, some politician has given me money, and he must be doing it because I voted for him. Now, that kind of picking resources from the community and getting the mindset to make sure that you are accountable is something you don't take for granted. Mm. Many Ugandans have taken money from friends. And they, they have not done what she did. Yeah, that's right. That happens a lot. Many Ugandans have helped friends and they have helped them for decades. Mm. They have never been winned out. This lady borrows from a friend, uses the money well, and tells the friend, let me pay you. And she says, I'm indebted to that sister of mine. Mm. She's my investment angel. You see the word she used? There was a sense of guilt and commitment on her, say, on her side which was saying, if they did get a grant, I should feel guilty. I should feel a sense of accountability. That is a key learning for whoever is listening. That you've been giving get, or getting grants. How guilty are you about accounting for that resource? And you also has been giving resources. How committed are you in following up those resources to ensure that the people you have been assisting Last time you assisted them with 500,000. Mm. They should never come again to another 100,000. Or another 200,000. Or another 500,000. If ever they are to come back, it should be to say, we have grown so big, is there a way you can give us now 10 million? We are big. But the person is still depending on the all the kind of handout that you gave them. Very important points, Charles. Mm. <coughs> Chris, so you were in business, you started operating, then COVID-19 happens. It's a reality we are contending with today. Yeah. How has it affected you and uh, how are you managing? COVID-19, first of all, I told you I have a pharmacy, have a drug shop, and a drug shop is in Bujuko. Okay. have another clinic in Gayaza. Mm -hmm. I was cut off completely from those ones Movement. because I don't have a, a personal car. Though I would get, I would get a sticker. But I had no number plate. <laughs> <laughs> you were sense of staff, but <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so most of the stay <coughs> visual work was cut off. Then I had to go and into an extra expenditure, making sure that my staff at the clinic reside there. Mm. No one should go away because if they go away, coming back is hard. Again, Leaving, they have to leave early because they are fearing curfew. Yeah. Mm. Now, with all these realities, just moving on, um, I know, of course, government has a number of programs to support young people, especially. Mm. And uh, I'm sure you've, you, you, you have some knowledge, you know, about some of these programs. In your view, um, what more do you think can be done for these programs to be beneficial to young people like you? Uh, who have already made the first steps into especially self-employment and business? Self um, actually, I would start a bit lower. Mm. Before giving anyone any money, I think skills, uh, knowledge is fundamental. Mm. If I had gotten the money before Enterprise Uganda, actually I had ever gotten more money before, but after Enterprise Uganda I had very little money, but the knowledge that the government has been given us through Enterprise Uganda is what made me start. If a person is already with the right knowledge and has, is already on the way, the government should encourage people who are already doing something. For example, I will speak for the pharmacist. Mm. 
They say that pharmacists don't want to work. Pharmacists, we want to work. But remember, you are working for a business person. Which business person, for them, they want profit. <coughs> but uh, when you tell them, I want allowance of 20,000 every day, that's the loss to them. Hmm? But now, me, I'm a pharmacist. The pharmacy is mine. I got capital in that way. I'm there almost 24-7. When if the whole night you find me there, the whole day you find me there. Mm -hmm. In other words, for example, if already somebody is a profession mm -hmm. and is given capital in their profession, mm -hmm. I think they will use it better for the benefit of the country. So you left the other job to focus on this business? Um, I go there twice mm -hmm. and all the time I'm at my You're place. Okay. Every night from 6 up to 11 in the night I'm at in the farmers. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, we have a right to two. So I supervise mine and another one, okay. but that has helped me to boost my business. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Mm. Charles, what do we mm. take from these quick uh, learnings there? She has brought something that I thought we, we needed to begin to appreciate and begin to talk to specific professions. Mm. Because now here is the lady saying that um, if we all picked a pharmacist and empowered a pharmacist, to go private, mm. they would do a much better <coughs> job, faster, cheaper, and more effective mm. than leaving it to an open field that anybody can fill that space. So many times we have ridiculed or even um, uh, bashed our professionals and said, these white collar fellows are not keen to succeed. In reality, I think you've just seen what she has said, she had gone through scientific training on pharmacology. Mm. She had never gotten that aspect of saying, how does somebody translate pharmacology into, into an business. enterprise, into a business? Mm. When she got that and combined that with her professional line, it was a story to fly and move faster. Mm. You can see, she had been told that you cannot start a pharmacy unless you have got 20 million. 20 million. And she and started that. very, very small and quickly won the respect of credit suppliers. Once she had her own uh, license, she was the one going to run that thing. And I'm sure now if she was to tell us her own experience with the suppliers, well, how she's going through with that uh, kind of um, interaction with suppliers, we initially doubted her. Mm. It must be a different story now. I hear mm. you. I hear yeah. you. And how was as an individual? <coughs> yes. Yeah. She's a pharmacist? Correct. Then the discipline comes in. Correct. I think sometimes we underrate ourselves, especially yeah. young people who have gone through school. Mm. You have a qualification in one area or another, ICT, mm. Mm. and all these other areas and disciplines. Mm. I think there's need to really have their minds unlocked, and I think that's where training comes in handy. It does. Yeah. We have also had the uh, people in the agricultural extension services. Yeah. They're everywhere in the country. Yeah. Underutilized, demotivated underpaid, mm. always quarreling and feeling that they did a wrong course. Mm. And yet, if there was a way we could get those people to realize that these village homes where chicken are and the chicken are dying, if there was a way we could get these extension officers to begin to appreciate that, treat a few village, I mean, it's a few ch a chicken from a few homes, use that as a testimony, the money would begin to it flow. Will, it will begin coming. And I'll tell it you this, Charles. I mm. know for the fact that if mm. you speak to a number of corporates, yeah. what we call the middle class, yeah. they are owning a farm or two yeah. somewhere. Yes. And uh, about 80% are busy making losses. Very correct. And one of the most, uh, the, the big gap there mm. is lack of skilled people to support Very or what you'd call extension support. Correct. You know, correct. to support correct. some of these activities. So, mm. viewers, I'm sure we're going to pick, um, you know, key lessons from some of these um, discussions we are having, mm. especially today. I think this is dedicated directly to you, uh, my brothers and sisters out there. Let me go evangelical here. <laughs> Who went to school, you have <laughs> that qualification in a certain area. It could be mm. you could be a scientist or an artist. Mm. There are ways you can monetize that and make it in mm. business. But we'll pick the discussion from there after this very short commercial break. Mm.